Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Grace Podcast. This is Crystal, and I'm here, as always, with my friend and co-host, Shelby. Hey, Shelby. Hi. Glad to be back. And we have an incredible guest with us today that we are so excited to introduce to you, Trillia Newbell. Trillia, thanks for joining us on the Daily Grace Podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So for those of our listeners that don't know, Trillia is a wife, a mom, and author of several books. We were just talking about how Trillia is a big name in our household because we have several of her kids' books. And we're going to talk today about her newest children's book called Jesus and the Gift of Friendship. Um, and we know that a lot of our listeners don't have kids. And so we're going to encourage you, like, don't tune out because we're going to talk a lot about just the idea of friendship and what that means as believers. And so we're just really excited, Chilia, just to hear from you and your wisdom. We're big fans of you. And so we're excited to talk to you more. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So tell us just a little bit more about yourself and then even tell us what a day in your life looks like in this season. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Every day looks different. So I have teenagers. I have a 14 year old and a 17 year old and Every day looks different. We, I have never been so tethered to my calendar in my life. This is a unique <laughs> season because they have activities and we have activities and we're all, we're just trying to figure it all out. And it is an absolute joy. If I could encourage those who have children, don't have children, whatever, I would love to change the narrative of teenagers, mm -hmm. but that's not what this time together, Isabel. <laughs> um, so, so the day, my day in life, I do, I'm an early riser. And so, um, and then I do work, I work for Moody Publishers. So I, I'm an acquisitions, an acquisitions director there. So I lead our team of acquirers, which basically means I have the joy of working with authors and extending book deals. So that's my work. Um, that, there's a lot more to that, but that's it in a <laughs> nutshell. And I get to help edit and encourage and um, cheer on others who are in this work. And then mm -hmm. I've been married for 20 years to my husband, Thern, and I live in the Nashville area. So it's a little town called Franklin. That's where I live. And mm -hmm. um, that's enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Okay. First of all, changing the narrative around teenagers. I, th I think you can talk about that for just yeah. a minute. Yeah. I think that would be really helpful. What needs to be changed? Well, I, I think that often, and you see this on Instagram a lot and everywhere, actually, <laughs> teenagers are depicted as kind of rebellious, dumb slobs. <laughs> They're just like foolish and you know, unpredictable. And, and I will say every stereotype has a little bit of truth. <laughs> so they're still learning and developing and growing, but I don't, they, these teenagers are really smart. They just need guidance. And so my job and my husband's job is to teach them, right? So we're trying to guide them and teach them, okay, well, that maybe wasn't the best idea. Let's teach you. And they, they, they understand there's growing and learning and understanding. And, and so um, they are also pretty resilient. They are experiencing all sorts of pain and we're going to be talking about some of it, friendship, you know, pressures and pain. And, and they, they get up and, and are learning to, for, Christian children who have uh, professed faith in Jesus, learning how to cast that burden mm. onto the Lord. They're learning at a really young age. So I, I just think there's a lot about teenage and they're, and again, I should also note, I only have a limited experience. I have experience of my teaching my local church. I have experience of, I help coach cheer at a local school mm. and I have experience of my kids. So those are my limited experiences, but I think they're also just a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. They're just delightful. And um, they're, as they're developing and growing. So, so I think we need to, we, to give them that credit. I mean, God has created them in his mm -hmm. image and he delights 
in his creation. And um, so I, that's it. I, I, I think that they, I understand that they make dumb choices. <laughs> <laughs> It can be a wreck. You're like, what's happening right now? Get your emotions together. Get your emotions together. So I get, I get that. But they're also humans trying to figure yeah. out the world. And so yeah. maybe what I'm trying to say is that we need to extend some grace mm-hmm. and let them, you know, that like the grace that we want people to extend to us, love our neighbor as ourselves, love yeah. our neighbor, mm-hmm. our teenage neighbors, yeah. the way mm-hmm. we want to be loved. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's what I need. I really mean, but. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's encouraging for us. Our oldest is at, you know, 10 years old. They, they both just recently turned 10. So we're not that far off from mm-hmm. kind of the preteen teen. And so everyone always says like, oh, just wait. That's like the word that you that always is. hear yeah. from like, even when it's like the newborn stage, like, oh, just wait until they're toddlers. Oh, just. And so I feel like now that's what I'm getting is, oh, just wait. But then just hearing stories like that, I'm like, I'm actually really excited for that. It's just like a new season. Each season is sweeter for different reasons. And so... Mm-hmm. We appreciate that encouragement. I'm sure our listeners did too. Yeah, so. yeah. Purely, I had purely selfish reasons oh, totally. for asking that question. I was like, "Dude, tell that's, me, tell me." That's gonna happen a lot. I have a feeling. That's okay. That's I, okay. Well, I should say I'm not saying that it's easy, and I'm yeah. not saying that um, you won't have seasons of hardship because it's it it's a brain heart. That's where the mm. it's your brain is like. Mm. How do I answer this question? What do I do? How do I serve? That's where you're like. I, I'm not a certified counselor. <laughs> I think I need a degree for this. But, but the Lord has gifted us to serve. And so anyways, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I don't want to say that it's easy, but I do think the Lord gives us the tools that we need and the mm-hmm. grace that we need. Mm-hmm. And um, and I also think they're delightful. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great encouragement. That's great encouragement. (laughs) Um, Okay, so let's talk about your book, Jesus in the Gift of Friendship. I'm always interested to hear from authors what led to you writing it, because very rarely does an author feel unattached to the story behind (laughs) the book or the idea that sparked it. And so I just would love to know what led to you writing this book. Yeah, so it's interesting. I actually, what sparked the idea was hearing about a man who um suffered a lot of um when he was young i mean uh, definitely when he was young and how friends came around mm-hmm. him and served him and and there is I, I i don't know in this season um especially when i first started the thinking about the book it was just right after things started opening up from COVID, you know, and, mm-hmm. and friendships were being squeezed. And I saw mm-hmm. in, in a lot of the church, churches division and, and people leaving, it was just like crazy. There was so much going on. And I just started thinking about how good it is that God has given us friends and mm-hmm. how painful it is when a friend leaves or mm-hmm. when something happens or or it's even to make friends, it's just, it's hard. And no, I I, I think for kids, especially it, you can feel that that tension really early. They don't even know what it is, but they've Mm -hmm. either been hurt, shunned, uh, left behind, left out. I mean, you see that really young. And so I thought, Lord, if you have a story or or some way that I can teach this um, to help kids kind of build a foundation early to know, then would you give me something? <laughs> and, and so that's really how, but it, it was because I've, I know a story of someone who endured um, a lot and friends came around and then just seeing all the mm-hmm. fracturing and of uh, friendships. It's just a mm-hmm. gift. It's a mm-hmm. gift to have mm-hmm. friends and Jesus is our closest friend. And so I wanted to highlight those things. Okay, so this is kind of pivoting a little bit because we, working at Daily Grace, we are producing a lot of content, helping writers and editors produce content. On your Instagram, you said that it was three years between you writing this book and it actually being released. And I think there's a little bit of humor in this that Shelby's giving me this question <laughs> because <laughs> I wrote a Bible study two years ago and it'll be released in... In when? When Jesus comes 20, back. 2025. <laughs> 2025. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus returns. That's um, <laughs> but I, I do think there is a lot that the Lord can do in seasons of waiting and just being patient and and just through delays. And so I'd be curious to hear how you've seen God's faithfulness, even in the waiting, in the delay when this book was being released. Yeah. Well, it wasn't delayed. It was scheduled that far out. So I just, so, so, um, so for me, because I'm in publishing, I kind of know how it goes. Mm-hmm. And, and with kids book in kids books in particular, it just, takes a long time. So I understood that what took me, it took me an hour to write this book <laughs> That's amazing. and three years to publish it. <laughs> One hour to write it. As a matter of fact, it's kind of a funny story. I had, I had this idea to write this a book on friendship and for kids for several months. I was like, ah, I really want to write this. And I was like, I just don't know where to begin, what to do. I was on my way to speak to some a, a big uh, school in Florida. And before I got on the plane, I was like talking to my husband. I was like, I think I have an idea. So before I was getting in the car, I sat down and I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how sometimes books happen. But anyways, so what, so, so I didn't feel this tension about the delay, but interestingly, what happened in my life was that I had two people who um, I was account. I have a, I like to have accountability partners, and I've had them since I became a Christian. It's just some a rhythm of both friendship and sharing, and making sure mm-hmm. I'm sharing my life openly with people um, that I've always had. So two of them moved, <laughs> and then I met someone else. And I was like, yay, we're going to, we're going to do accountability. It, it usually takes a while to build up trust because you're sharing everything. She and I clicked like so quickly. And, um, she was one of my pastor's wives. Well, then they left. Oh. <laughs> and the, the best part is it, is that I told her, I was like, it is so hard because Nashville, where I live, is a pretty transient area, mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. come and go, and you know, and I've you I've never un- experienced anything like this. This is so unique to have people. I grew up in Knoxville, where people stay often, and so these are cities in Tennessee, and so to experience this kind of open door, people coming and going, is kind of hard for me. Mm-hmm. I like established friendships, and you know. And so then, of course, they left. But grace to all of them. I love you people. Grace to you. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, friends. But it was, I I was like, okay, Lord, this is harder, especially when I'm, I have, I'm older with a husband who is my dearest friend and then kids. It's hard to build relationships. And so I was experiencing kind of what Zeke in the story was experiencing. And that to me was an interesting part of the waiting for this book. I should Mm. share more about that um, as I say it out loud. That's funny. Thank Mm. you for drawing this out because I didn't realize. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I just didn't realize that Mm. I was experiencing this kind of parallel of Mm. Zeke as I waited Mm. for this to to come out. So here I am, Mm. accountable I don't have right currently um, accountability friends besides my husband, who is the biggest one. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's, it's, I'm in that season of waiting Mm. like Zeke was as he's Mm. praying for friends. Mm. Um, I'm in that season of just, okay, Mm. Lord, I have good friends, but that kind of person that you're going to share everything with, that's where I am. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We can relate in a lot of ways. Both Crystal and I moved to a new area within the last like eight months or so. Mm-hmm. And so just getting plugged into new churches, you know, finding new people. Of course, you you keep your friends in the place you yeah. moved from, but it yeah. is very different to have somebody face to face who you're seeing mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we can we can relate to your story a little bit. And yeah. thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so what do you think are some of the barriers that we face to true and lasting friendships? I believe the Surgeon General or someone like that just released a study that loneliness is an epidemic. Mm -hmm. So 
you are onto something. There is research that there's something going on in our culture right now where even it's even uh, seen as, 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 as a problem for our health. Mm-hmm. It's an epidemic. So with that said, some of the things that I think hinder friendship is the fact that um, we are individual. And, and, and I'm talking about the American culture. We're pretty mm-hmm. individualistic. And so even without, I think, trying to push people away, we're, we're individualistic. So we've got our ideas and our things and we're not com- committed to community sometimes. Mm. I think another problem is busyness. I mean, half of my conversation has t- been talking about my our schedule <laughs> and all the <laughs> random things. And I don't like the word busy, but the reality is, is that most of our schedules are pretty full. Mm. And so with these full schedules, um, trying to also add in friendship uh, that is that isn't surface. Now I've got lots of acquaintances, but friendship that goes deep, which is what you're talking about, that's hard and it takes Mm -hmm. a lot of work. I think in our church culture, we have a problem with trust. And I think right now there's so much that's we're looking at that's going on. It's just hard. Who can I trust? Who can I not trust? Mm -hmm. Who's going to, that is a big issue right now. I feel I see. And so I think that can, it can be hard to, open up and tell your deepest, darkest secrets, which we shouldn't have secrets. Everything should be in the light, but you know what I'm saying? Your struggles, your, yeah. when we have a culture that I don't like to use this word cancels, <laughs> but we, we're just in that culture right now where you can't do, you're like out. So that is really hard. So I think that when, when you get a combination of individualism, you know, individualistic and kind of isolation, we're isolated often, um, and our busyness with a lack of trust, uh, that's, it's hard to commit. It's hard to commit Mm -hmm. to a people, um, but we really, we need to, but I think those are just a few. There's also, there's other Mm -hmm. things that hinder Mm -hmm. our deep friendships, but I think those Mm -hmm. are some that I see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, earlier you mentioned like Jesus being our greatest friend, you know, and that's kind of key in your book as well. But I think someone can hear that and myself included and be like, but what does that actually mean that Jesus is my friend? Because we can think Jesus is like far off and God is big and holy, but he's also near and his spirit lives within us. So what does it actually mean that Jesus is our friend? Yeah, I love this question. Well, if you look throughout the scriptures, uh, you see that Jesus, he is drawing, he's drawing near. He draws near to the brokenhearted. Um, he gets, he invites us to a throne of grace when we need help, right? And he provides mercy in our time of need, Hebrews, Hebrews 4, I believe. And so you see throughout the scripture, God drawing near, Jesus drawing near to people and coming into their, their, um, I was going to say mess. That's kind of a trendy thing, but, but <laughs> really, I mean, going into our sorrows, he's a man mm-hmm. of sorrows. He understands he's acquainted with grief. He um, has been tempted in every way, but without sin, he gets it. He understands mm-hmm. and he's not afraid to go right into it because he's, he's God. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, so Jesus is our friend because we can speak to him. He's always, he lives to make intercession for us. Um, but in that, he he is our friend. And it, and if you look at uh, John 15, it says, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but um, you are my friends. So Jesus is talking to the disciples. He goes, you are my friends if you do um, what I command. And so we see kind of this, okay, he is our friend, but we prove to be a friend of Jesus if we follow him, if we obey him, mm-hmm. if we do what he commands. And so um, and so there is this, not a, a, a call to obedience and following Jesus in this friendship. Mm-hmm. And that's how we prove that we are with him, um, but he is always with us. He is mm. for us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So I, I just think um, part of a relationship with Jesus is 
recognizing his nearness and speaking to him through prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I think bringing in John 15 is really key there because I don't know. Have you guys like seen there's all these trendy things? It's like friends with Jesus, like t-shirts and stuff. And <laughs> sometimes you, you see it thrown around lightly, but then there is a part of being friends with Jesus that requires action mm-hmm. on our part. So what does our obedience look like in relation to that friendship? Yeah. Well, it looks like loving God with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength and loving our neighbor mm-hmm. as ourselves. That sums up the law, right? So we can't do it without Jesus. As you, John 15, the whole thing is about abiding in him. And so he says, you can't do this. You cannot do any of this without me. So we don't want to try to obey him without Jesus. Like we need Jesus to obey Jesus. <laughs> so what yeah. it, so ultimately what it, what it looks like is knowing the word and following it, taking God at his word and living our lives accordingly is mm. um, what one theologian says about taking our faith and putting it into action. And so I want to be real clear. It obviously doesn't save us for grace. We have been saved Mm -hmm. through faith. It's not our own doing. It's a gift of God so that no one may boast. That's Ephesians two. But we definitely, if, if all throughout John, like first John, all the Johns, (laughs) we see, (laughs) we see that, um, we see that our, our obedience is, is proof of that relationship. It's not Mm -hmm. that it's what makes the relationship happen. It's proof. So Mm -hmm. obedience looks like um, uh, uh, repentance, Mm -hmm. confession, um, walking in the light, which we've kind of talked Mm -hmm. about, um, asking God for help so that we can can have the fruit of the spirit poured out, Mm -hmm. peace, patience, kindness, all that fruit. (laughs) And, And so... It, a loving our neighbor it, and it so but none of this we can do on our own so obedience looks like asking god for help so that we might live rightly and be more and more like christ because mm-hmm. we can't do it on our own none of it um yeah. and so that to me is what obedience looks like and we're going to fall on our face and we ask god for help to do it again <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that because if you think about the times that we feel far from the Lord, it's often because those things are missing, repentance, prayer, Mm -hmm. going to him, going to the word. And so for us to deepen that friendship with God, we have to spend time with him. I mean, that's the case with any relationship, right? And yet we often neglect that with the Lord. We just feel like it's going to magically, like I will magically feel closer to the Lord. He's just going to like throw that in my heart. But really, we do have to come to him and spend time with him and be in his word. Um, So as we think about like physical friendships, as we think about what it looks like to be a good friend, but then also just to have a desire for friendship in our lives, like what do we do when we have that desire, but then it goes unmet? Because I think that's a really hard, and like you talked about loneliness being this like epidemic, that's a really hard place to be. So what encouragement would you have for those of us that have that desire, but it's gone unmet? Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you the same advice that I kind of use throughout the book. So in with Zeke, his mom says, pray, pray to Jesus, pray to Jesus. And that's the same advice that I would have for anyone because I don't have a magic pill or a magic 10 step plan, but I do believe that God hears us and that he cares so deeply for every need. So we can go to God and ask him for friends. We can ask him, Lord, um, please provide a friend, Mm. a friend in this season for me right now. Um, And I think sometimes we think that we need to go to God with the big, like, Lord, I I have cancer. Yes. We need to go to God for, for that. Um, Ask him for healing. Amen. Mm. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we think that he doesn't care about something Mm. like a friend but he does. And so we can ask him for anything, including a friend. So that's my advice. Um, I could also tell you how to different things to like be available, make a call, 
I think those are important too, like those practical things. Mm -hmm. Are you picking up the phone? Go ahead and pick up the phone. Think about someone, pursue someone after church or or throughout the week. And I think those are important too, but um, I really do believe ultimately if we can run to the Lord, you never know how he's going to provide. Mm -hmm. And then we can look back and say, okay, Lord, thank you for that provision. Mm -hmm. I just think about how many times I've done all those things and yet I've neglected prayer. Like I've mm -hmm. made myself a Bible. I've done all those things, but I've not gone to the Lord in that. And it's so simple. And yet it goes back to having a friendship with Jesus. It comes mm -hmm. back to spending time with him, like our greatest friend. So I just love that very like simple encouragement that you're giving children in a book, mm -hmm. but as grownups, we need it too. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just appreciated that. Yeah, I do too. Um, and I think, I think one question I have on that is like, what do those prayers look like? Because like you said, I think we know how to pray for the big things like God help, God provide, mm -hmm. God heal. But then when it's like praying for the small things, I don't know about you, but I almost feel like, oh, this feels like a luxury that I'm praying for, you like know, it's like a selfish and, prayer. Yeah, like it's a selfish prayer. And so just like, what are some of the things that we can pray when we're praying for friends? Yeah. Well, let me first I think, oh my gosh, I want to mm -hmm. debunk the idea that it's selfish. We, I mean, think about the Trinity. I mean, the God, there's a community. Then mm -hmm. Jesus creates Adam and Eve. He could have just created Adam. He didn't. He creates Adam and Eve. And then he creates the church and he creates all these nations. And he's, I mean, there is something about community mm -hmm. and this, this, that, that's God's idea. Right. And so I want to encourage you and anyone that it's not selfish to ask for community, for, for people, for friendships, because we I actually think about even the New Testament. We can't obey most of the New Testament in isolation. Love one another. Mm -hmm. Be kind to one another. Bear with one another. I mean, all of these things are in community with other people. And so um even Jesus, as he, he had friends, Jesus had friends. He wept for his the death mm. of a friend. So there's there is something special about a good friend, right? I guess my point is is that friendship is actually rather important, and there's so many other things that I bet we think are just these like whatever not important things that are so essential to thriving as a Christian. Mm. And so I want to encourage you, if you are feeling lonely, that God, he, he, he understands um, and he sympathizes and it's important to him. And so you can pray specifically, Lord, I pray for, um, for a friend and Lord, I pray that you would give me someone. For example, my prayer might be, Lord, I have I have the joy of having a lot of good friends. Um, Lord, I I'd really love a, an accountability partner, someone that I can meet with um, once a month and 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 share my life with. Lord, would you provide that? That's real specific because that's specifically what I am praying for right now. Lord, would you provide not just a good friend, but someone who we can open the Bible with and mm -hmm. and sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron. Well, Lord, I need that other that other edge. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so yeah. I think that is absolutely um a an appropriate prayer. So whatever it is that you feel like you need, Lord, I need someone who understands um who's going to speak truth to me in love. I, maybe you've had experiences where you've just had a lot of harsh feedback or harsh correction. Mm -hmm. Lord, I I want someone who's going to speak truth, but in love. Lord, would you provide that for me? Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is. And so that's that's how I would encourage people to pray. Think mm -hmm. specifically, not just generally, and then uh, ask the Lord to provide for it. So as we wrap up, I just want us to think about, you know, I think we've all had times where we have just lacked really deep, meaningful relationships, whether it is accountability or just someone that we can live life with. And so what would be just your final encouragement for anyone who is currently feeling this way? Yeah, um, you're not alone. That's actually my encouragement, which sometimes it's just good to hear that. Like, oh, you're, there's lots of other people who are, are 
feeling this way. Um, and and I do encourage you to to grab someone. So if you are sensing that you're you're um, alone or that you feel lonely or that you're discouraged, I grab someone in in your local ch- church context or someone who you know that's a friend, your neighbor, whoever, and and share share with them what's going on. Um, we talked a lot about praying to the Lord. So I'm assuming that you also know <laughs> to pray to the God who hears you, who sees you, who wants to comfort and encourage you um, and then grab someone. You don't, yeah, you don't have to suffer alone ever. I really do believe that. Um, and I also want to say that when you're praying those specific prayers, the Lord may answer your prayer in a different way. Um, and so I I think it's it's good for us to remember that, that God who loves to answer prayers, he may provide in a way that you were, that was totally unexpected, mm-hmm. but exactly what you need, because he knows, he knows what you need. And so I encourage you to trust him, that he's going to um, care for you and provide for you and the way that is best for you. Mm. Yeah, I think that's so encouraging. Most of my dearest friends are people that when I first met them, I thought, oh, I can't be friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I I think that that's just such good encouragement that we can trust the Lord in the provision. Something I always remind myself of too is that God has placed me where I'm at with the people that are around me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to be looking for this magical person that exists somewhere in the world who just like isn't here. I'm like, no, I am going to trust that God has provided what I need Mm -hmm. in the community that is around me. And just like you said, just go grab them and just start those Mm -hmm. relationships. So Mm -hmm. I think that's really helpful. Um, Trulia, last question, and this is our favorite question to ask. It is one that we ask every single guest that we have on the Daily Grace podcast. So we always say at the Daily Grace Co. that the gospel changes everything. And Trulia, we would love to know what has the gospel changed for you? I became a Christian at the age of 22. So I did not grow up in church. So the gospel changed the entire trajectory of my life. I was not, I had no, I, I actually, (laughs) it's, comical that we are talking right now if you would have talked to Trillia at the age of 21. And so the Lord, he 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 transformed my heart, changed my worldview, changed everywhere I was heading and yeah, the gospel has changed my life and therefore it's it, he's allowed me to share the gospel with others through words and speaking it's it's really truly remarkable. So I am forever grateful for the young girl who was bold to share the gospel with me mm. so that I can now share the gospel with others. Mm. What an encouragement and what an encouragement to us to share the gospel with the other adults in our life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know we've talked about this before on the podcast, but sometimes you assume that an adult has made a decision and that that decision will never change when it comes to Jesus, but we just don't know that. So maybe it's a really good encouragement to us to share the gospel with somebody around us. Well, Mm -hmm. Trillia, thank you so much for being here today. My takeaway from this conversation is honestly just like to pray those specific prayers so applicable to me who has been living in a new place for just a couple months and is seeking out those friendships. So I am definitely going to do that. I think, yeah, I don't know that I prayed about it very much in all honesty. So I'm definitely going to do that. But man, it has just been a joy to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you guys. Well, you can find the links to connect with Trillia and to find her book that we chatted about today, as well as a link to connect with her many other books, which are all phenomenal in the show notes. In the show notes, you can also subscribe to the podcast newsletter to stay up to date on all things Daily Grace podcast. We're so thankful that y'all joined us today and we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.